Hello everyone, and welcome to the iHack project. So if you follow my channel for any decent amount of time, you'll know that I put a lot of effort into audio production, and this ranges from sound design to mixing, mastering, and anything like that. So the purpose of this project is to basically create a decent machine for my audio needs whilst beating the standard iMac on specifications and on price. A lot of you may know that I've always used a Mac as of some sort as my main audio solution and uh, DAW, but I do use PC occasionally to do re recording for audio streams and stuff for YouTube videos, which you can see right there is going on to record this audio, not from the silly GoPro camera I've got right there. But the problem with that and recording and doing everything on this is that I don't want to use this for like an audio workstation um, and I don't want to transfer files around every time I want to do something it's just messy so I don't record like YouTube audio on a MacBook on, on my audio MacBook and stuff like that so it's just you know it's not ideal for me to have everything in one in one place especially when they work on two different operating systems I currently use an early 2011 MacBook Pro which is right here uh, as my audio DAW which is digital audio workstation by the way and this is really not enough to handle the tasks I give it in Logic. For small tasks, it's actually, you know, fine, but for large tasks and large project sessions where there's a lot of mixing streams and files and stuff, it chokes because the machine cannot pull the audio streams from the hard drive and process the plugging data, like, all at once. It just, it just can't handle that. It's just not good enough. So why did I choose to build a Hackintosh? Quite simply, the price and efficiency of Apple products is really, really, really bad, especially for what I want to do. So considering what system I should buy to replace my MacBook Pro, I did look at all the products Apple had to offer and the Mac Mini was ruled out right away for its limited RAM and potential and general usability for audio. It's just too small. And there goes my phone. So the Mac Mini was ruled out because it was just limited in every way, like it was really small. It's nice that it's small, but for my purposes it's not nice that it's small, just because it's limited by what you can put in it, by like its RAM and its processor was like not really that great as well, and it's just upgradability, you can't really do much with it. So that's out, and now moving on to the new MacBook Pro. This is a, like a two, three year update from my old one, but it still suffers from the same problem, which is a really slow hard drive and you know the graphic card I can't really care about because I don't game on it or anything like that it's literally not used but it's just not good enough like it's not powerful enough and it's not efficient enough and it's really expensive it's another 1400 1500 pounds to buy a new MacBook and it's just like no I don't want that uh, it's nice that it's mobile as well but I want a more of a desktop solution which I can just you know have on the desk and stuff so that's out. And then we come up to the IMAX, which is the first, I would say, usable product I would consider doing audio on because it's, you know, it's one machine, it's all there. It's, it doesn't look half bad as well. But uh, when we go into the extra money that you have to need to like buy a fusion drive, which is, I don't think as efficient or as effective as a, a full SSD, then we're just like, no, it's way, it's, it suffers from the hard drive problem and then adding on the fusion drive it just takes it up to an astronomical price so it suffers from that same problem that the cost to like efficiency ratio is just really really terrible and then when you get to the rest of the specs it's not really that amazing either i mean i've got my notes over there so let me just look at them <laughs> so on the lower end it comes with an intel i5 2.7 gigahertz processor which is all right I guess it's nice, but there are newer things out there and more powerful things out there. And that's the low end. And this low end comes in at £1,099. And then if you take into account the RAM, it's only eight gigabytes of RAM. And I have eight gigabytes in my PC, which is, you know, two four sticks and it, it's fine, but I want more than that. And it's it's just, you can't upgrade it. Like there's no upgradable place or can put, there's no upgradable Thing you can do with it it's it's in there you can't change it it's done on the higher end of the IMAX which is I believe like the most expensive one is 1699 pounds you can get the 27 inch I think it's 27 inch or something a massive screen but the only difference really is it's got a better graphics card which has got one gigabytes of graphics compared to 512 megabytes and a slightly better CPU that's it 
that's like that's it you're getting a slightly better cpu and a better graphics card both of which would probably run you i would say like uh, maybe a hundred pounds total like more to buy so it's it's astronomical they're charging you 600 pounds for what would be a hundred pound upgrade it's just blah but the reason why I'm going to choose this machine is because it's the closest thing Apple offer at the moment to a standard desktop, desktop machine, apart from the Mac Pro. But this is the problem with it. That's the Mac Pro is the other option I had. And as of January this year, 2013, I believe they stopped selling them altogether. It's just like because there was a fan, it's not an inefficiency. There was a, a problem with the fan. It didn't meet guidelines or something. So they completely stopped selling the old Mac Pros, which were astronomical in price anyway. Cheapest one, I think, was about £2,000. And yeah, sure, it's nice. It's a beast. It'll do exactly what I want it to. It's got all the power I need. All the, It can be upgraded and everything like that. It's got exactly what I need apart from the price. So that's out already as well. So the only thing I could really deal with was the iMac. So for those of you that didn't really know, a Hackintosh is basically taking your own parts and building a PC and then installing OS X on that PC. You need to do some research into what, what parts actually work together since OS X has some requirements, uh, which means you can't install it on any computer you want willy-nilly. It's just, you know, it's Apple. And uh, in this series, I'll be documenting like the selection process of everything. So everything will be compatible and I'll do literally document as much as I can from uh, the picking of parts to the building and then uh, after this in the following episodes it'll be uh, the installation and conclusion with comparison to the current iMacs that are available on the market. So hopefully we can move forward soon. I have a list of products that I have planned to buy within the next two weeks or so to uh, build this iHack out of. Um, so they'll be down in the description but this is by no means a finished list. I do plan to update it and you know make it more efficient or more cost effective more powerful you know as, as long as it kind of fits what i wanted to do so take a look down in the description to see the parts i have selected so far and in about two weeks i'll have enough to basically buy them all and then continue with this series so uh thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video take care guys